One of the many endangered and threatened species that we have in the Ramsar site is the Australasian bittern. There are figures of between 1,500 and 3,000 birds left in the world, and this particular area around the Nilawa uh, forest component of the Central A Ramsar site is the global hotspot. We're really empowered by bringing cultural practices back on country. Everybody coming together, First Nations people of the region, scientists of the region, community members of the region and other people that are interested in looking at the whole ecology of that area and work towards a bigger and better outcome. The objectives of the Central Murray Ramsar project are around maintaining and restoring the ecological character of the wetland areas. In reality, it's the same thing as restoring healthy country. We have the Yakwa Indigenous Knowledge Centre, we have the Murray Darlings Wetlands Working Group. The actual site is managed by national parks and there's also various um, Aboriginal people that have connection to the Weirai Forest and there's also surrounding landholders. Our role was to develop a wetland remediation plan. What could we do on the ground to achieve a better outcome for Australasian bitterns, making it a, a habitat that would be suitable for them to forage and, and nest in the area. Our local Aboriginal community, they know it as the bunyip bird because of the weird noise that it makes. The boom by the male carries over the water. And we've been working with researchers and with the Yakwa River Rangers crew to revegetate habitat and to try and create more sites where these bitterns can find a home. What we've been able to achieve so far is undertake monitoring to determine what the values are currently at the site and, and what the gaps are in terms of uh, wetland vegetation needed there. With our delivery of, of plants, the Murray Darling Wetlands Working Group engaged a wetland ecologist to show them about rushes and sedges and reeds and, and wetland plants and start learning how to identify some of these plants and what their value is within wetlands. It may not flood as frequently as it did, it may not flood for as long, it could be a case of that there's flooding that is extended. So we're not getting the same drying regime that perhaps we would have had there historically, along with things like uh, stock and also pest animals such as pigs and, and even deer accessing these areas, compacting the soil and damaging the vegetation. The Aqua were able to engage a fencing contractor that allowed their rangers to work with the fencing contractor and learn about fencing. We started with a contractor doing pest animal control in sites in Weirai and what we were able to do was set the Yakwa team up with that contractor and, and learn from, from the contractor how they do baiting and then they were able to then in following years go out and do the fox baiting themselves for us. We think Yadabal Lagoon could be taken from where it is currently where it is really lacking in vegetation to a point where you have a wetland site that will be uh, partially covered in tall reeds and rushes like taifa, kabungi, and then also having areas where you've got a, a lovely display of water plants that sit on the, the surface, having lots of different water birds utilising the, particularly the rushes and the reeds and nesting in those grasses and just having such a symphony of frogs. A lot of the ranger team we've worked with turtle monitoring so we're starting to see some improvements in that way, different growths and the, the team gets really excited when they see that sort of stuff happening. Some of the rangers are, are young and I think having them get the ability to work with various Organisations, I think it's important. Potentially organisations they could go and work for in, in the future. Looking into the future and the changing environment and what we've seen in the last few years, the projects that we have invested in long term have been able to, to survive through that. So I think the key to the changing environment is gain funding where we can to continue projects in, into the future. We'll be building on the successes of the Bramsar project uh, in the past 
to seek additional funding and ongoing, uh, and ongoing dollars to continue the work that we've done. And, and much of the work that we have done in the past around weed control and pest control and community training and support and, and Aboriginal group capacity building um, has, a, has a legacy. It's, it's, it's critical that we continue our efforts in this space and, and not drop off.